Now, one thing I have done on this mannequin, this mannequin is from Pivot Point, and I believe his name's Aiden. Uh, Aiden is very wide through the temporal area, and so what I have done is I've sectioned just a touch higher. I have a client that I cut this on last week by the name of Ava, who is a very tiny young lady. And because she has a very small head, I actually sectioned this a little bit lower. That's how you're going to adjust things for your client, is you're going to actually make adjustments to their head shape. The higher you section, the thinner or the lighter of an effect you're gonna get through the sides, a flatter effect through the sides. The lower that you section, the wider you're gonna get, more uh, graduated of a shape through that uh, parietal ridge area, and that's going to end up giving you more volume. So depending on the head shape, you're going to adjust. So if you were to look at where the side and back meets, it's right here. I have sectioned just above that. So if here's the parietal ridge, I've sectioned just above it, just to make an adjustment for this particular mannequin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start this haircut off at the front hairline. Now, a lot of times what you're dealing with at this front hairline is you are going to be dealing with uh, different sideburn areas for men, women even have a bit of a sideburn area. And with this look, we want that to be gone. It can be completely gone. So what I'm gonna start off with is I'm gonna start off with a diagonal back section. Basically, if, if this would be 90 degrees, if this would be a 90 degree vertical section, I'm going somewhere in that 80 degrees. I'm going very high with my diagonal back section. I'm gonna section this hair, comb away, and what I like to do is I like to clip up against gravity. So if you watch with my clip, I go up against gravity, it keeps that tight so that I'm just working with the hair in front. And what I'll end up doing, let me adjust Aiden just a little bit for you. Everybody can see pretty well. What I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna comb this hair forward and I'm going to take all of this hair away. So this is gonna end up being very, very short this is gonna progressively get longer towards the back, that, hence that mullet effect. So what I'm doing is I'm combing this forward, I'm literally taking the hair off with my scissors right at the front hairline. Now this Aiden mannequin has a bit of a sideburn, which happens very frequently, both in the salon and in the barber shop. So I am just going to take that off right with my scissors. So currently I have been doing hair now for about almost 25 years. And I am really into using clippers when needed, but I also want people to be able to do their work with scissors as well. Uh, when I was trained many, many years ago, I was taught that I could only use my scissors at first, and then I could start using the other tools. I'm a huge fan of a razor. I'm a huge fan of texturizing shears. You'll even see me use a little bit of texturizing shears towards the end of this haircut. But I want to always be good at cutting with just my scissors first and then working with other tools. So what I've now done is I've taken that sideburn right off. I've combed this hair forward. I cut it right at the hairline. So this is about fingers width right at the top. So what I'm gonna end up with is parallel sections still diagonal back, extremely high vertical sections. Uh, once again, clipping up against gravity so that this stays out of the way. Make sure that I can, you can see me. And I'm going to tilt Aiden forward just a touch. The reason I'm tilting him forward just a touch is because this way I can keep my body very parallel to the work. If I tilt forward just a little bit, I can comb from underneath, I set my finger in, and I can cut very clean. I think I'm probably right in your way, so let me see if I can't spin around and let you see from this side. This will be a little bit better for you. So now you can see my body is parallel to my work. And I'm able to cut just to my second knuckle, shift, and cut once again. Now, because I have a slightly diagonal section, you will see that this hair here at the parietal ridge is getting just a touch longer than the hair down at the bottom. Now, if this was uh, if this was pre-sectioned lower, that would cause quite a bit of graduation. I pre-sectioned higher, so it's gonna create more of a flatter side. And 
I'm going to continue taking diagonal back sections. I'll do one more section before I work through to the back. Uh, a lot of times you see people just kind of break hair into ear and back. I like to make hair flow together all together so that it's one fluid shape as opposed to front and back or side and back or top and back. And I'm continuing to over direct into my previous section, just like I did with my last section. By over directing into my previous section, I'm able to gain just a little bit of length. Now right now, this is not looking like it's gaining enough length to be what we would consider a mullet. However, once we hit the parietal, or I'm sorry, the mastoid area of the head where the side meets the back, the hair will, because of the way that the head drops down and the hairline drops down, we're gonna gain a lot of length. So I'm gonna continue taking diagonal back sections, but now I'm gonna work all the way through to the nape. Comb this hair out of the way. this out of the way for you and I hope everybody's having a great time it looks like I'm getting a lot of people logging in all over if anybody wants to shout out has any questions please feel free I might be a little delayed because I'm just trying to keep an eye on it through the um, through my messages here in the uh, comment section but please feel free to make any questions any comments and I will do my best to answer all of them once again, over directed into my previous. Now you can see I drop all the way into the bottom hairline. I'm now going to lift this hair forward or towards the front, and I'm going to create a straight line. I'm actually creating just a line that's almost, uh, I guess I would say that this is parallel to the wall or perpendicular to the floor, a 90 degree straight up and down and I'm just cutting straight up and down. What that's gonna do is it's gonna gain length from the bottom, and then I'm gonna end up over directing. Now, once I've hit this point, this is gonna end up being a stationary guide. What happened to your right eye? Uh, good question. So it's actually, technically it's my left eye because um, I'm in a, it's a mirror image being on here, but for those of you who are familiar with Van Michael Salons, you will know that our, my boss, Van, is a bit of a uh, extreme person as far as he is really into kayaking, he's really into mountain biking, and it seems like everybody that works for the company is into something that is dangerous. Well, my personal hobby is boxing. Um, I've been boxing since I was a child, and I, um, I actually did a charity boxing match on Thursday. It was to raise money for a... Uh, mental health and addiction center here in Atlanta called uh, Ridgeview. If you ever need to send somebody to get some help, whether it's uh, mental health or addiction, we, uh, I highly recommend that place. It's a, it's a great center here in Atlanta. It's called Ridgeview. And I, was, uh, I did a boxing match against a guy that was about six inches taller than me, a Ukrainian by the name of Konstantin who outweighed me by about 20 pounds and we, uh, we beat the hell out of each other for a few rounds just to put on a good show and raise some money. And I walked away with a bit of a black eye. I haven't seen him this week, but I'm pretty sure he probably has one as well. Although he definitely got the better of me in the, in, in the fight. So <laughs> when somebody asks what happened to my eye, that's what happened. I had, uh, I had somebody punching me in the face for a few rounds. So uh, <laughs> back to cutting hair. So what I'm doing is I'm using a stationary guide at this point. I'm over directing everything to this last section, which was the first section that worked all the way from the side into the nape. And I'm just cutting parallel up and down. And really finding that this hair is starting to gain quite a bit of a mullety effect right away. Uh, you can kind of see that it's gaining a lot of length. I'm gonna continue working through the center back. So I'll continue working vertical sections, slightly diagonal. 
I showed you that it's really just something that mimicked the front hairline. So we're talking about a very high degree of elevation, probably somewhere in the uh, 90 degrees or 89 degrees of elevation, not quite 90 degrees, not straight up and down. You can see it slightly curves. However, it is a bit, um, uh, it is very vertical. So we get to take a lot of, um, oh, somebody says that they're happy to see Van Michaels training here on Hairbrain Live. Yeah, thank you very much. We actually do a Hairbrain Live now every month. Um, and the next one that we have coming up is just in a couple of weeks. Uh, and we love doing these educational events and for a lot of different reasons. For one, it allows us to work on our craft. Uh, it allows me to work on something like teaching, which is something that we hold very dear here at Van Michael. We have, uh, we have a, a very strenuous training regimen that we put all of our staff through before they can go on the floor. And because of that, we have a handful of educators that are top of the line. And what we like to do is things like this, where we get to give back to the community, do education for everyone. It's one of the great things about Hairbrained is you're able to get some free education online through platforms like Facebook and Instagram. And what we're doing is we're uh, today, this gives me a chance to just practice teaching something that I've been doing quite a bit in the salons recently. So now I'm to my last section on this side. So from here, you can see I'm working just past center. Combing all the hair away. And clipping up against gravity. And still using this stationary guide directing everything to the same spot so it's going to gain a lot of length. Now what ends up happening when you use a stationary guide on the side and if I do the mirror image on the opposite side is it creates a bit of a point in the center. Don't worry we're going to go back through and recut that so that the, the point goes away. But you can see I have definitely gained a lot of length. You know, at the very beginning of this, it looked like we were going to have, you know, a very short haircut. That front is very short, but you can see it's gained a lot of length through the back. On the opposite side, I'm going to do the complete mirror image. So now I'm going to take, once again, if this would be 90 degrees, I'm now going to take a slightly diagonal back section, basically just mimicking the front hairline combing all of this hair away. And once again, I am going to clip up against gravity to make sure that all of this hair is sectioned cleanly and secure. I'm gonna comb this hair forward using my shears and taking all of this hair off. And then Now this is something that I could go back through with a clipper or go back through with a razor if I wanted to. Um, I'm doing just some scissor over comb because I want it to be a little bit more androgynous. So uh, we have starting to look good, starting to look good. Once again, almost completely vertical sections, probably in that 89, 80 degree range as far as where my actual elevation is. And because of that, I'm gaining just a little bit of length up here at the parietal ridge, um, but I'm staying fairly flat. Cutting this first section is gonna be cut at finger's width. I'm able to take that very short So you can see it's very short. This is, it looks like it's gonna be a very short haircut, but because we use a stationary guide, once we get um, to the mastoid area, we end up 
gaining quite a bit of length very quickly and we end up maintaining that very mullety effect. You know, that mullety effect has really been in recently. Uh, it's one of those things coming out of, uh, coming out of quarantine that a lot of here in the U S a lot of the ball players were doing it where they let their hair grow and now they're letting their just, they wanted the sides cut, but they wanted stuff cut in the front. They wanted their hair to have some sort of a style, but they wanted to keep all of their hair. So they said, ah, let's go ahead and try and make this mullet work again. And I really have been one of those people who has not been into it. I've really been kind of anti-mullet. And recently I've really just said, you know what, I've got to, I got to go with the flow and I've got to let other people uh, dictate the trends. And I can't, I can't fight it for too long. My resistance has become futile. And so now I am on board with the mullet finally. It's one of those things that I really, for a long time, was uh, just trying to fight it, but it's it's all over. And I feel like if you do it properly, it looks great, it looks cool. Uh, and that sets you apart from the other people out there because a lot of hairdressers are just doing these really poor mullets right now. And people are just looking, uh, you know, they just don't look put together. And one thing about me personally is I'm really a fan of all types of hair, short hair, long hair, men's hair, women's hair, whatever kind of hair. But my big issue is I want it to look good. I want the hair to look stylish, no matter whether if it's a bald fade or a mullet or a shag or a bob, whatever it is, I just want it to be done well. And that's why I've really started, you know, kind of changing my thought process and getting on board with these mullets because I want to do them well and I want my clients to walk around looking great. Uh, in fact, uh, the young man I was talking about, Alex, that came in for a mullet last week, he's uh, the number one recruited kicker for uh, American football uh, coming out of high school in the United States. And he is all over Instagram. And his mullet, that when I cut his hair, he did a TikTok and he did an Instagram live from the barbershop. And I cannot tell you how much... Uh, how many comments he got about how good his hair looked and how stylish he looked because I did his uh, because I did his mullet properly as opposed to just you know kind of buzzing the sides and letting the rest go. So keep working. And you can see I've gained quite a bit of length very quickly because I'm using a stationary guide at this point. Somebody just uh, logged in that they're watching from Hungary. I, that's the great thing about Hairbrained is I can talk to people on other sides of the world, which I love to do. I love the fact that someone from Hungary right now can be logged in and be taking a virtual workshop with me uh, as far as and learn how I cut a mullet, you know, and I'm guessing, I mean, Hungary's got to be, you know, 10,000 miles away. So it's a, it's amazing to make us be able or allow us to be so close to one another so easily. At this point, this is a stationary guide. I'm working almost straight up and down. My sectioning is slightly diagonal. That does a couple of things. It gains a little bit of length at the parietal ridge. It's also, once the head dips down below the occipital bone, it gains more length here on the, at the bottom as well. So it allows it to somewhat flatten out near the rounds of the head, but then once you get past that round, above the parietal ridge, below the occipital bone, you actually gain more length by having that slightly diagonal section. So you can see that's laying together very nice. Like I had mentioned before, on the opposite side, I'm going to work just past center. Now that I'm past center, not a lot is going to be cut because most of it was cut on this side. Whatever reaches, we will cut. So... I'm over directing this over. Never cutting past my second knuckle. You, know, you can see I'm very diligent about combing, pulling my the hair very taut and never cutting past that second knuckle. Past the second knuckle you lose the tension on your hair. And I'm very diligent about cutting very clean and I've got 
very strong, sharp scissors to cut very clean. So I don't want this hair to buckle in my fingers and not be cleanly cut. So now at this point, I do have a bit of a point in the center. So I'm gonna go back through this shape from the center back. Let's see if you guys can see. I'm gonna comb this hair, the center part. And I'm now going to take vertical sections straight out. These vertical sections are going to then have be overdirected completely into the center with a stationary guide. What that will end up happening is it'll run out very quickly because all of this hair was pulled forward. Now we're pulling it into the center back. That's going to take that point off. It's going to flatten out this hair and it's going to keep corners towards the outline. What that does is it leaves it a true mullety effect. It almost gives it kind of points. So I'm taking slightly diagonal vertical sections. I'm pulling this hair out. I'm finding the hair at the nape and letting it fall out. And I'm cutting straight up and pulling straight out to create a flat line. Okay, combing that down, let, seeing that I've now collapsed that point. On this side, I need to do the same, but I'm going to finish. I'm going to use a, a fairly large section. If you've got really strong hands and really sharp, sharp scissors, you can do a stationary guide in one snip. And because this hair was cut already towards the front, I can pull all of it into the center and push that hair out of the way. And I can create a very clean line. Now I'm grabbing hair from the opposite side, I can feel. Okay. So that has collapsed that point. Now I'm going to do the opposite on the right side. I'm sorry, a mirror image on the right side. Exact same thing. I'm over directing everything into the center. Not a lot will reach because I've already cut it on the opposite side. When I pulled it towards the front, that took most of the hair away. Now I'm pulling it into the center to take off just the point. You can see not much reaches. Now my outline is going to look a little cattywampus at this point because I haven't created an outline. I'm going to wait until after I dry the hair to actually create the outline. But I will make a very strong outline on this. But now this hair that I've actually cut in the front, um, in the center, that's going to be my guide for the top. So my top is going to be cut twice. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this hair horizontally using this uh, top or cross check as my guide. You can see as I pull it out, I've got a bit of a corner that I've created. This corner is because I pulled the hair to the center and cut. I pulled the hair to the side and cut. This has created a corner. That corner is going to be my guide through the top. So the top is gonna to have a slightly triangular section. So you can see, slightly triangular. And what I'm doing is I'm pulling this hair. Here's my corner, there's my line. I'm now going to use that corner as my guide Cut. Now it's going to be disconnected from the underneath because I'm using a slight diagonal section and I'm cutting T to my section. So that is not going to connect to the underneath. It's going to gain just a little bit of length. Okay. So you can see it connects through the back, but disconnects through the front. 
I'm gonna work with parallel sections through the top, bringing everything from the right over to the left, and then I'll do a mirror image and bring everything from the left over to the right as well. So I'm pulling, and I'm using just the natural elevation of the head. Okay, I'm just pulling this straight off of the head. Move that a little bit better for you. directing this all over. Now I'm going to run out of hair. I know that because this is, hair is crossing over, um, but there are little remnants. You can see just a few hairs that I need to cut. Making sure that I'm using proper tension and that I'm only cutting to my second knuckle. It's very easy at this point to want to get sloppy because you can see the hair so clean. And you can see that you're only cutting a small amount. A lot of times people just want to rush through this and want to just get kind of sloppy with their work. This is where you really make yourself a better hairdresser by taking uh, pride in what you do. Okay, somebody said that the head was not in the frame enough. Let's see if by moving it like so, does this help any? Okay, once again, I'm gonna do a mirror image of what I just did on the opposite side. I'm taking a slightly triangular section. So basically the hair is going to come down at a slight angle in the front, coming all this hair away. My underneath, my, my cross check creates a corner. That corner is my guide. That guide is going to give me a line that I'm going to cut that's parallel to my, pre, my, to my parting that is going to end up making this disconnected from the underneath. So from here, continuing, and this is where it starts to disconnect. Basically just at the back of the ears where it starts to disconnect, it continues to disconnect through the front and gains more disconnection and a bit more of what I would call an overhang. But that overhang will be styled back, which ends up being very flattering. So uh, it, it doesn't look as disconnected as it will, uh, or as it is technically, it's gonna be very disconnected, but visually it's not going to look as disconnected. I'm combing over another parallel section. So you can see I'm just, I am just past center. I am pulling this hair to my guide. My guide's very clean for me to see. Don't cut past your second knuckle, my friends. You guys able to still see cleanly? Once again, I'm pulling all of the hair from the opposite side over, but because I've cut it all on the opposite side, which was closer, I do not think there will be much to cut off. There might be a couple little hairs, but nothing much. It's more just probably actually just a little bit of weight that I'm taking off. All right. The top is almost finished. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna work from the crown area. Once again, that center piece created a corner here. Now the center piece is actually going to be a guide for a mohawk section. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take Aiden here. Oh, somebody's looking in from Arizona. Geez, it's pretty early in the morning in Arizona. Uh, hopefully you're uh, drinking your coffee while watching this. 
So I've taken, I've got a center section, let's call it a mohawk section. I'm going to take that hair, use the center back as my guide. Here's my center back. I'm going to use that as a guide, cut that corner off. And then I'm going to elevate and cut up and out. So I'm going to gain length through the front, but I'm going to remove weight through here. Because we cut it like this, our, our cross check in the center is very long in the center and it keeps coming up. I want this length in the front, but I want to take some of this weight out right through the round of the head or the apex of the head. So I'm just elevating this up. Continuing, you can see here's the piece in the front that I'm using as my guide. And now I'm going to take, once again, a stationary guide, over directing all of this into the center, taking my corner off, working up vertically, and just taking that weight in the center basically at the apex of the head off. Not a lot, but it does make a difference. That small amount of weight will make a big difference when it comes into styling this, this look. Because if that weight was there, when I blow dry this back like a pompadour, if that weight was there, it would, it would actually push the hair forward. And that, that just would be a little um, frustrating, I would say, for somebody trying to style their hair. Opposite side, same thing. I'm, push, I'm pushing now rather than pulling. Taking the corner off, taking the weight off right here in the crown, and then the weight here in the apex. Now at this point, we have quite a strong mullet. Okay. Now I am gonna put a little bit of product in here. Uh, a lot of people have trouble styling their mullets because they don't actually use a um, any product when they try to style their hair. A lot of a lot of shorter, messier, funkier looks, people are like, oh, I don't really put anything in it. Well, you're never gonna get that you know, really finished look without something in there. So what I'm doing is, this is a very, very light product, but it does have a little bit of hold. This is Aveda's Men's Grooming Cream. It's got a light hold. It, coat, it uh, uh, kind of coats the hair very nice and adds a great bit of, um, a great bit of shine without looking greasy. There's a difference in my mind between greasy and shine. You know, you don't want you don't want the hair to look greasy and dirty. I want the hair to look just polished and uh, and finished. So what I've done is I've ran that through the hair, um, make sure that I've got all of it really good. One thing I'm really big about doing is I actually like to comb product through the hair. I find that especially with shorter hair or textured hair, that if you make the hair, if you, if you don't, you end up with these areas of the hair that are have a lot of product, have a lot of shine, have a lot of hold, and then other areas that don't have any. So I prefer to actually comb my products through the hair. And I'm gonna use a, this is just a classic vest brush. Um, this is called a, a vest brush, I think it's called a Pro 2000. And it's a very easy brush to use. It's just classic styling for wrapping the hair as well as for leafing the hair. So what I tend to do is I like to start off at the, on the side of the head. And because I want this to be a pompadoured look, I'm going to blow dry up and over. Um, make sure. So I'm blow drying up and over. 
even the, the back, even the back, the back I am blow drying up and over. Let me see that. <laughs> okay, I guess somebody uh, just logged in. Somebody was asking about the bruise on my eye. Uh, I'll tell that story again. So, I uh, one of my hobbies, and probably my biggest hobby that I have, is I'm, I've been boxing since a very young age. And now that is definitely not my profession. I'm not even close to good enough to even step in the ring with professionals. Um, but I do enjoy it. And even in my 40s now, I, I still box. And on Thursday night last week, so uh, just about five nights ago, I was in a charity boxing match. I, I cut or I, um, I boxed to raise money for a center here called Ridgeview, which is a mental health and addiction center. And I, uh, I got, I got, in a, and I was uh, boxing. And the guy that I uh, boxed against was about six inches taller than me, a Ukrainian by the name of Konstantin, who was a lot tougher than I thought he would be. Uh, we, we boxed, we beat the hell out of each other though, and put on a really good show and raised a bunch of money. I know that uh, myself, I personally raised about fifteen thousand dollars for Ridgeview, and I don't know how much we raised, but it was a great event. It, it's called uh, Corporate Fight Night or Fuck Out uh, Underground Fighting in Atlanta, and it was right in the heart of Atlanta in the Buckhead Theater. And we had, a, we had a great turnout, it was great fun. Um, you know, I, I definitely uh, I took a, a beating pretty good, but I, I think I haven't seen Constantine this week, but I'm pretty sure he's probably rocking one too. Uh, but and somebody just told me I can rock that bruise pretty well. I appreciate that. I, uh, I, I'm definitely one of those who, if any of you know me, I'm a extremely nice guy I love everybody but at the same time I, I do not shy away from uh, physical altercations with one another I, I love the idea of testing myself and pushing myself and even here into my 40s still getting in the ring and showing that I can uh, I can still be what I think of as a bit of a badass but yeah so I'm rocking the bruise this week The bruise takes away from the rest of everything. <laughs> so now, just like I had mentioned before, on the opposite side, I'm blow drying up and over. Just now leaping under. I'll start doing now that most of this is dry I'm going to start working on the top and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take horizontal sections and I'm going to leap back away from the face
can see this is really starting to come together. Why can't you get real people to work on? Uh, the truth of the matter is most of the demos that I do is on people, but because today was a Tuesday, our salons are actually in operation, and there's nowhere quiet for me to do someone. So I decided I'm actually working out of my house right this moment in my office to uh, to do some uh, doing mannequin. But the next Hairbrain Live that we are doing is in the salon on a Monday because the salon is closed. Our East Cobb location is closed that day, and we will be doing a live make a uh, live model for that one. I'm really coming around down the home stretch at this point. percent of the way finished at this point we now have quite a bit of refining to do so you can see we've got a pretty strong kind of pompadour mullet shape but now I want to re refine it quite a bit so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go through comb the hair back And I'm going to cut the nape or the outline area. So tilting aid and forward. I want to keep the length on these corners, but I want to take off this point in the center. So I'm just combing this down and then I'm using the tips of my shears to just kind of straighten this out. almost creates a little bit more of a point or an exaggeration, almost a triangular effect. You see? And then I'm gonna take some weight out right here in the center as well. So the way that I'm going to take that weight off in the center, I'm going to take a vertical section, let the outline fall out, and I'm just going to go take a touch higher elevation. And then I'm going to do some deep pointing. But I just spent a long time cutting this haircut, so I'm not going to just shred through. What I'm doing is I'm just doing some seamless pointing. So if I start off with a line like so, when I'm done, I have a line like so. A little bit of weight here, I can see. Letting that fall out. Just taking a touch higher angle and then doing some seamless point cutting. Go 
Once again, just a little bit of weight. I'm letting the outline fall out. Elevating just a touch higher. Now, through these sides and top is when I'm going to switch over to another tool. So I've used scissors for all of this, except for now. I'm going to go through with just some texturizing shears. And these are some like 30 tooth shears. So they're going to take out about 50% of the weight. Uh, what I'm going to now do is I'm going to comb this hair up. Let's see if you guys can see. Comb this hair up and back. And just almost exactly the same motion as what I was doing with the wrapping of the hair and blow drying, I'm now going to use my scissors and my texturizing shears. And I'm just almost scissor over combing like up and then slicing right through my disconnection. So by starting with the texturizing shears right at the length of the of the of the underneath I can then go through and texturize some pieces to make all of this melt together just seamlessly and you can see it looks you don't see that disconnection whatsoever in the pompadour taking I see just a little bit of weight right here so what I'm doing is open and closing away You can do this with your regular scissor, but it's gonna take a little bit more out. I'm really just trying to take a touch of hair out. You can see as much as I did, just that is what's went away. On my opposite side now, same thing. I'm gonna flip the hair, come up and over. Doing a little bit of scissor over combing. And then slicing. Using this as my guide and slicing pieces through the top, through the disconnection. open and closing your shears the whole time. You don't want to be slicing through and dragging. But you can see as much as I did, that's all the hair that came out. It was not a massive amount. Just got a thank you for educating from Sacramento. Oh, I love Sacramento. I'm actually really bummed out. I was supposed to be teaching a class in Sacramento next month, but it actually just got postponed due to uh, all the ongoing challenges with this Delta variant. So. Um, we're, we're, I am going to be teaching at the uh, Federico Advanced Academy at the beginning of the year now. Uh, I'm going to be doing a, uh, a workshop myself and uh, my boss, Van, are going to be coming out to do that together. All right, so at this point, I have created a pompadour mullet. The only thing that I want to do now is one little trick that I love to do with almost every single client is I'm going to take hairspray and a brush, and I'm gonna brush hairspray through this. Men, women, everybody I do this. I love the texture that this control force gives me. So this is Aveda's control force. What I do is I brush the hair up and over. The back, same thing. And I am going to spray the hair. And then brush through again. What that does is it adds just a little bit of texture, lets me kind of uh, basically like manipulate the hair and put it in place and it will somewhat hold without it feeling hard or crunchy or sticky. It just gives a little bit of texture to the hair and allows me to manipulate the hair however I want it to. So now at this point, opposite direction, brush the hair up and back and over. And I do this with long hair on women. I do this on short hair with guys. I do this technique on so many people. 
um, just because it does add a great texture and it lets the hair kind of be manipulated however you want it to. So you can see I'm spraying a liberal amount, brushing through. And then I can kind of brush the hair into place wherever I want it to be. Okay. You guys can see we have cut a fair amount of hair and we've created a bit of a pompadour mullet, which I can see used on both men, women, whoever wants it right now, who really wants to just kind of stay on the edgy side while maintaining some of their length after uh, getting back into the salons again.